Hi, and welcome to the Otana Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Carter Channel 8, where you can see us. Hi, I'm Jody Weissen with the for staff some reason, at Fair. If you're a busy person and you can't catch us on Charter Channel 8, you can always find us on the inter internet. We are on blip.tv as well as YouTube, and we are on Facebook. Like us on Facebook, and you can find us there every day. Leanne does upload the newest episodes for you, excuse me. And also, the great thing is if you do like us on Facebook, you can win a pair of tickets to the Steel County Blades Junior Hockey Team team home games. So if you like to, if you like hockey or have never seen it and just want to know what it's like, the best thing to do is like us on Facebook and see it for free. It's a great opportunity for you. We're also always looking for uh, new information, something that maybe you know about go that's going on in the community that we don't know. Please send us an email at today at charter.net or call our producer Leanne Alt at 390-5751 and let us know what you'd like to see right here on the Oatana Today Show and we'll see what we can do. Stay with us for today's program. We're going to be talking about that levy that's coming up that you can vote on next week. We want you to be more informed about it. So watch the show and find out how you can vote. Also going to be talking about um, a fundraiser for the Hospice House. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> In a minute, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. If clothing catches fire, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes catch on fire, do not panic and run. This only fans the fire. Stop where you are, drop to the ground, and roll over and over to smother the flames. Cover your face with your hands to protect your eyes and your throat and lungs from the burns. This has been a safety tip from the Oatana Fire Department. Hi, I'm Kristen Salentine and I play Judith. And I'm Cody Jensen and I play Simon in LTO's current production of Hay Fever, directed by Kathy Rush and sponsored by Wells Fargo. Performances of Hay Fever will be held Friday and Saturday, October 25th and 26th at 7.30 p.m. with a matinee on Sunday, October 27th at 2 p.m. And again the following Thursday through Saturday, October 31st and November 1st and 2nd at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764. Don't miss LTO's production of Hay Fever. Hi, my name is Dave Olson and I'm with RNK Electric where we provide power to the people. We're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Oatan Today Show. Thank you for joining us. I do have with us, I mean, I have Tom Sager and Jolene Mose and Julie Rothmeyer. These are people who are here to talk to you about the upcoming levy. This is an opportunity for you to find out more information. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Well, thanks, thanks for having us on. Well, let's start with a quick introduction if we yeah. can so they know why they should listen to you. Sure. <laughs> so we'll start with you and yeah, then I'm down the Tom line. Sager, Director of Finance and Operations for the school district. Okay, good. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. I'm Jolene Mose, co-facilitator of the Invest in Tomorrow Vote Yes Today community group. And what do you do in real life? I am the director of Fernbrook Family Center. Okay, good. Thank you. And I'm Julie Rothmeyer, and I'm the other co-chair for the Invest in Tomorrow Committee, and I'm the Director of Public Affairs for Federated Insurance. Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. We're going to start with you since you're one of the school district's peeps. Sure. Um, tell us a little bit about what this levy is. Well, let's talk uh, yeah, about the levy. Um, you know, put it in historical perspective, we have an operating levy in place right now, an existing operating levy that was actually put into place back in 2003. And that existing operating levy is valued at $3.9 million. So that's there, that's been in place. What this initiative is really all about is increasing that existing operating levy. And we brought some handouts or some uh, visuals for our uh, viewing and listening audience to look at, and we can maybe refer to those right now. Really, this request has to do with increasing that existing operating levy by $1.8 million. And one of the things that comes up is what is it the school district hopes to accomplish with that? And it's really two things. What we want to do is establish our financial situation and really stabilize our finances so that, so that we can really focus in and achieve our academic and learning goals. So really, the first part is the means. 
That's the economic stability. And then the second part is to achieve our academic and learning goals. So that's what it is. It's an increase of 1.8 million. And so without those funds, we feel like maybe perhaps those goals will not be achieved. Yeah, we do. And, and you know, when we take a look at, um, we do all sorts of benchmarking and comparison. And when we take a look at how our school district generates revenue based on the number of pupils we serve and the per pupils, we know that they generate almost $1,000 less per student than our neighbors and other school districts across the state. And you can see here on the graphic where Oatana is way down here on the far, uh, you know, what would be the viewer's right-hand side of the page. And then the state average is way over here. So what does this really mean in real dollars? Well, at $1,000 per student, and we have 5,000 students, that's about $500,000 less that our school district has to provide educational services than other schools around the state. Now, the other thing that's really driving at this is this concept of purchasing power. And the, the, um, the element that we do have uh, this, this uh, inflationary pressure that has allowed our existing operating levy to lose purchasing power over the course of time. Now, what does that mean? Well, 10 years ago when this went into place, we were bringing in and it was generating $3.9 million. That's good. And it's still bringing in $3.9 million. The problem is that, and the challenge we have, is that the, what we were able to buy 10 years ago with that $3.9 is isn't the same that we can buy today. As a matter of fact, We've lost over a thousand or a million, a million dollars per year in purchasing power on the operating levy. So when you really combine those two things, the amount of revenue that our students generate, which is almost a thousand dollars less, and then combine that with the lost purchasing power, that's why we're in the situation we're in and going to our community to ask us to continue to support our schools so that the kids can have the educational opportunities they deserve and are community expects. Well, it's so funny. You put it in such a numbers way, it almost feels like a business. And quite honestly, it is, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And I think we sometimes forget that. We see the face of the children like, oh, they're playing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're learning. But there's actually a business side to this as well. Well, there really is. And there's really two houses that go on. You know, I mean, what we're really all about is student learning and making sure they're uh, achieving the goals and opportunities they have. But like any organization, it is business oriented. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we are. Now, the other thing that comes up quite often is people always want to know, 1.8 million, that sounds like a lot of money, and it is. So what will that cost me, the average homeowner? And we know that for an average price home in Owatonna, which is about $150,000, it's going to cost the average homeowner about $68.84 per year. Mm -hmm. Now, when you divide that on a monthly basis, that comes out to $5.74 per month. And we have a visual that we can maybe zero in on that mm -hmm. and kind of explain that a little bit deep in greater detail. Now, this is an so, average thing. Um, is there any way, let's say, for a person to put in their own house, what their own house is, so they can know exactly what, how much it's going to impact absolutely. them? Absolutely. In fact, what we would encourage people to do is go on our district website, mm -hmm. and we have a tax table that they can click on. And if the value of their property is worth more than 150000 then the tax will be slightly less. But if it's less than 150000 that's uh, graduated down as well. Now, the other important thing about this operating levy is that the um, ag land and farmers are taxed at the same rate as someone residential property in town. And that's really, really important so that if a farmer has a homestead and one acre and it's valued at $150,000, that farmer will be taxed at the same rate as somebody living in town and that would be $68.84 per year. Now what that means is all of the farmland is not taxed. Mm. That's a really, really important to know. So, so you don't have to worry about the croplands. It's just what the, your house, the homestead house, exactly. and then anything attached to that. Exactly. So this, there's a lot of numbers about this, and I think that uh, that's important to know. But I also want to talk to the ladies. Yes, absolutely. Lane, I want to talk yeah. to you specifically um, as somebody in the community. What, why is it important to you to uh, support this, this levy? It's important to me for a variety of reasons. Um, my husband and I have three small kids, two of which are not even in the school district yet, and 
just the overall consistency and high level of standards that Owatonna has provided with their education is very, very important to us. And so to be able to stabilize what they have right now so we can move into the future and not have to worry about cuts mm -hmm. as my kids get older. Mm -hmm. And that kind of plays into people that have kids in elementary, in junior high, <clears throat> excuse me, and in high school. Let's stabilize what we have and so they can continue to receive the solid foundation. What, do you have any uh, anxiety about what possibly might happen if this does not go through for you and your your family? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you were so busy working so hard. I'm like trying that. to remain very optimistic, yeah. Yeah. and I would hate for that anxiety to become truth. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just really trying to get out, and Julie and I are doing as much as we can with the community group that has been so supportive to educate people mm -hmm. and to encourage them to show up next Tuesday. Yeah, and Julie, you do. You've done that. You've met with a lot of different organizations and groups. You've been. I know you've been to the senior center and a whole bunch of different places. And um, what is some of the feedback that you're getting from some of the community members? Um, it's been very positive. Um, for the most part, it's been very positive. We've, um, and I should clarify that Pete Grant and Tom Sager have been out doing that as well, and we're trying to do this together. Um, but just was at a meeting last Friday with the Otana Area Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Um, they have publicly supported this effort. Um, very positive from the business owners, wanting to know where are things at, different presidents, CEOs, asking, you know, what can we do to help support this effort. Um, they see it as a need in our community to attract um, people to come to our to Oatana to live and or to attract businesses to, to want to be here. So it's a very important community effort. It's not just for those people who have, have kids in school. It's for all of us. Yeah. And so the response has been positive. School districts, uh, the, the level that they are at, they do affect prices of homes and, and whether people want to move into community, don't they? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I've had a few people tell me that that's a, a number one decision that they look at before accepting the job offer is they come meet with the school district mm -hmm. and see if it's somewhere that they want to be. So yeah. um, it's an important decision. Now, if some of our viewers are interested in maybe coming and talking and find out more information, do you have any more events coming up where they can go and do that? We do not because we're on countdown here <laughs> for, to Election Day, but I encourage them to go to the school district website. There's um, taped... Um, from different meetings that Tom and Pete have put on, and so I would encourage people to go out there to find information. There's resources. Also look for our Invest in Tomorrow Committee on Facebook. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great um, tidbits and facts and different, um, you know, there's some filmed things on there as well, so I encourage people to get out there. Most importantly, if they can't be here on November 5th, do the absentee val ballot. That's very important. If you're heading out or you have meetings or you can't be here, um, go do the absentee ballot at the school district. They're the administrating agent for this election. And or get out on November 5th. And so we only have a few seconds left. I'd like to know what effect will this have on the school district, if you can, in a short amount of time, right. if we don't pass this levy? Well, you know, you talk about the anxiety a little bit, but, you know, if it does, if we don't pass this levy, the school district is prepared to reduce its budget by $5.3 over the next three years. Mm -hmm. That comes out to about $1.8 million a year. So what does that really translate to, to the other side of the business? You know, that means increased class sizes. That means um, lost opportunities of courses that students are currently able to have that they won't have, and overall reduction of staffing and service levels. It's a huge impact. On, it would on be a very significant district. impact, okay. yes. Thank you so much for your time. This is a very important subject, Thank and I appreciate you. you guys coming in today. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having Thank us. Yeah. And we will be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Coda Living Community and Park Place Senior Living are Oatana's premier living communities for seniors. Coda Living Community, located on the Oatana Hospital and Mayo Clinic campus, provides short-term, long-term, and rehabilitative care. It features private and semi-private rooms, ceiling lifts, and spa. Coda Living Community continues the tradition of providing quality care to area residents. Park Place Senior Living is expanding into the Cedarview Care Center to offer enhanced assisted living. For more information, please call 
Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Otana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. Hi, I'm Ron Clancher with Clancher & Sun Landscaping and Concrete. We support the Otana Today Show and so should you. United Way of Steele County is all about seniors living with purpose and dignity. Building a community of giving. Children have a healthy start in life. Youth achieve their potential. Bringing neighbors together. Investing in education, income, and health. Please join us and all Jastin's employees by giving generously, advocating for a better quality of life, and volunteering your time to a partner agency. We all win when we Live United! And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. Thank you so much for being with us. The uh, hospice house here in Owatonna gives a very important, uh, they, they help a lot of people, and they're a very important part of this community. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today and a fundraiser that's coming up. But first, I'd like to introduce these two gentlemen that we have here. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. Why don't you quickly tell us who you are and a little bit about what you do in the community. I'm Alden Kruski, and I'm with the Homestead Hospice House as a volunteer. Okay. Um, okay. What do you do here in the community? I'm retired. Okay, good. But you do uh, a lot of volunteer opportunities. Yes. That's, yeah, good. Awesome. And you, sir? My name is Roger Langley. I'm an owner out at Culver's uh, uh, in Owatonna here, and I am here in support of uh, Hospice House. We, uh, we have had one breakfast, and we're going to have another one to support them, and we would uh, very much like to have the community involved. That's Good. what I'm here for. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that. First of all, um, Alden, tell me a little bit about the Hospice House. What is it, exactly is this? Uh, Homestead Hospice House is actually a community-owned, it's a Homestead Hospice, Inc. It's a locally-owned building. It, the health care is provided by Alina. Mm -hmm. And it's a line of home health care. And it provides hospice care at end of life. It's an eight room building. And it's, um, I should get in a little bit what we're raising the money for yeah. is the patient care fund. Roughly 40% of all the patients use the patient care fund. And this is, a fund that when all of their assets have been used up as in medical care or nursing homes, whatever, mm -hmm. then this fund will take care of the board and room that like Medicare and insurances do not pay for. The hospice house is unique. It's, it's not a nursing home. No, this is, this no, is it's, a, it's a unique situation. And from what I've found out, been told, is basically what you're doing is you're, it's a person's end of life situation. Yes. But you want to make it as much like home as possible. Yes. Um, less clinical and more comfortable. Right. And that's what the house itself is built like a house. It's there's eight bedrooms. There's a kitchen area, a dining room area. There's some private family gathering rooms and yes it very much feels like a, a house to give them a place so that the family can gather yes. and take those and and, and um, that, people stay there for any different lengths of time oh yes i mean from hours to months yeah it can be and uh, the big benefit is not just the patient themselves mm. but the families yeah. and it's a place where families a lot of times at the end of life have a place to meet on neutral ground. It's mm -hmm. not like we're one family member's house all the time. Yeah. Or yeah, so it's just a place. And it's very comfortable <laughs> and, and comforting, it feels yes, like. Yes. And so um, the patient care fund is, like you said, uh, you, you've said this actually a couple times, uh, Roger, that no one gets turned away. No. It doesn't matter what you have in the bank, you will not get turned away to, to have this opportunity right. to be there. So there, but the money doesn't grow on trees. Well, does that, it? <laughs> that's why we have. That's what my dad told me. Anyway, right. when I was a kid, he kept telling me that. So this is that's, an opportunity. Let's talk about. You're having. Um, it's National uh, uh, Hospice Month in November. Yes, November is National Hospice Month, and the first event that we're going to talk about is uh, on November eighth, Friday. And the hours are 6.30 to 9 p.m. 
it's in conjunction with uh, Holiday Inn and Suites and Cashwise Liquor. Mm -hmm. And they've held this event for several years now, and they're gracious enough to host it again. And it's a ticket item. It's $10 in advance, $15 at the door, and all the proceeds go to the patient care fund. And at this event, it's going to be a beer tasting event. Yes. So you were telling me that um, there will be four distributors? Uh, four or five. Okay. Uh, Dave Isaacson, the manager at Cashwise, lines up the distributors to come in, and then the distributors can feature their different lines that they want to uh, emphasize. And you are saying there might be over 100 different There's samples? usually at least 100 I don't, you, beers. We need, you said to pace yourself? Yes. I was little, <laughs> I was, wow, that's, even if you had little tiny cups, 100 of those could go, it could be no, kind of crazy. Yes, you get a sample glass and you go around to as many as you would like to sample. So um, is, is this talking about, uh, so the, is there a chance to vote on your favorite, or is it just a, a fun time to try different things? Um... It's mostly just a time to try what you want to try. It's, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of like Oktoberfest and kind of uh, those kind of beers. The specialty available. beers, the yeah. micro. micro yes, brews. and uh, at this event, uh, Holiday Inn will have uh, pizza by the slice for mm -hmm. sale if people want something to eat okay. while they're drinking. So. Yeah, which is advisable. And, um, but this isn't, again, like we said, a mo an opportunity to raise money for this. Yes. And Roger, you out at Culver's have, as, as you mentioned earlier, have done fundraisers for the Hospice House. Tell me a little bit about why this is important for you as, as an organization in Owatonna to support this, this facility. Um, to me, Hospice House creates a real quality of life. Um, it's something that I've been involved with with my family. I've seen it happen and um, it, it provi to me, when I think of a family, you know, and it's end of life, uh, to me the quality of life is that the family is able to spend time with this person who is, who is uh, having, having the sickness. Mm -hmm. And when they can spend time with the family, instead of having to provide the care mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feed them. Yeah. And uh, years ago, we used to, the family used to take care of the of, uh, of people who were sick, and it was in my family too, mm -hmm. where we took care of the family, but we didn't get to spend quality time with them and really enjoy the last days of their lives. You're busy doing other and things. And you're busy. Yeah. You, you know, you got your life. And when you go out to Hospice House, they they provide all of that for you, and you are able to just spend quality time mm -hmm. with uh, with that family member. And I think that's so important. And to me, what I see with Hospice House, it's a quality of life here that benefits the whole community. I see uh, all the businesses, and that's what we're about here, is we'd like to get the businesses involved mm -hmm. because the businesses are who hire all the employees, and they're the ones who uh, I think can really benefit from uh, Hospice House being a big part of our, 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 uh, our community. Mm -hmm. And when, when we have uh, an organization like this here, uh, and you've got... Uh, employees who work for you, it's going to touch everybody in this community in yeah. one way or another, yeah. sooner or later. You know, and I think when, 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 when we realize that it touches everybody in this community in such a big way, uh, this provides quality of life, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I know my firsthand experience is that it's nothing but good. And we should, we should really get in here that this uh, hospice house was voted uh, maybe maybe Alden should touch on this, but they just got a big recognition, oh, and that should be brought out here, in <laughs> yes, my opinion. It yes, it should, yes uh, last year there's a survey sent out to family members <laughs> that have patients, and it's um, quite a lengthy survey. And anyway, Owatonna Hospice House was in the top 100 of hmm. 1,300 hospices in the United States. Wow. That's good. Boy. Wow. Well, and that speaks a lot to the, 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 the people who work there, to the volunteers, <laughs> oh, yes. but also to the businesses who support it, the people, because they're taking the time. And so by getting out and going to this event, which, again, when is the event? This, the beer tasting is Friday, November 8th at the Holiday Inn and Suites at, from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, and you can get advanced tickets and yes, save $5. Uh, $10. Okay, yeah. $10, and they're available at Cashwise okay. or at the Homestead Hospice okay, House. Good. 
And then, Roger, when is your event that's coming up? Uh, the 21st. Okay. Uh, we're going to have that on the 21st of November, mm -hmm. uh, 7 to 10. We're going to go out and sell tickets for this year. Mm -hmm. We would like businesses to buy uh, <laughs> one but preferably 200 tickets, <laughs> yes. and then they give them out to their employees. Yes. And that's what we're after. Yeah. We would like the businesses to kind of get on board with this, and that would be their way of supporting. And it's a breakfast that you're, you're we going are to, going to have a We're going to have a breakfast buffet that they'll okay. walk through, and we want the whole community to come out. Um, find places that I'm sure Alden's going to have places where they can uh, purchase tickets and things like that. Right. Okay. It'll be $5 a for the breakfast okay, we'll find it. We'll, we will talk more about that, too, when it yeah. comes up. But let's get people out to this event coming up on next Friday. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's kind of been interesting to see the school levy and talking about children and the end of life and how both of those are need to be supported by the community. So really, thank you for your time today. And uh, we will be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. take a quick look at what's going on in your community. Uh, today we did talk about two important events and I hope you can attend both of those. The election on Tuesday as well as the home hospice event on the 8th. But Riverland Community College in conjunction with College Knowledge Month is giving the opportunity to any high school seniors who want to apply at Riverland to do so and have their application fee waived. That's through the 31st of this month. So if you are thinking about attending Riverland and you're a high school senior, get that application in today so you can have that fee waived. The Oatana Hospital Blood Drive is open. It's through tomorrow, the 31st, at the Oatana Hospital from 10 a.m. to 4. If you'd like to attend, you can schedule an appointment by calling G Jenna Herzog at 507-977-2778, or you can just do that at the time of the day of the event as well. Now, if you have a bunch of Halloween candy and you bought it because you're expecting all those kids and they didn't come through and you don't want your kids to get into all that can candy, the Oatana Hospital is having a candy buyback event on Friday. This is going to be from 4 to 6 at the hospital where your children can bring in candy. They will get $1.50 per pound. So every pound that they bring in, the kids will get $1.50. And it's open to kids 12 and under, store-bought, wrapped candy only. And it's an opportunity for the hospital to promote healthy living as well as as um, eating sweets in moderation and good dental hygiene. So make, take advantage of that as well. The Oatana Catholic Daughters of America is holding its Fall Bazaar from 10 to 1 on Saturday. Cookies, pies, holiday yummies will be available as well as a raffle to benefit St. Mary's and St. Isidore School. And the Community Blood Drive will be held at St. Joseph Church on Wednesday, November 6th from noon to 6. Thursday from noon to 6, as well as Friday from 8 to 1 p.m. Culver's is going to be giving out one pint custard vouchers for everyone who donates a pint of blood, a pint of, blood, a pint of Culver's. I think that's a really good deal. <laughs> Roger's sitting over here. What a great guy. Um, you can call 800-733-2767 to make an appointment and find out how you can give back to the community in one more great way. Thanks so much for joining us. Be back. Come back with us on Friday. We're going to be speaking with Chris Busey, talk about Oatana and... It's that time to change the batteries in your smoke detectors. See you then.